What does Rainbow Six Siege, Valorant, Call of Duty, and those popular shooters have in common? They all have guns, yeah. But most importantly, they all implement damage drop-off. And surprisingly, they all use the same maths to do it. You wouldn't think any gun from any shooter would require maths to function, but it does. In this video, I'll explain how this math works, different ways to do it, and doing something which I believe no game has ever done before. Let's go! But before we go deep in this topic, let's start off simple. This is the game called Enter the Gungeon, a top-down shooter where you have to get through the dungeon and kill the bosses. Most guns in this game work in the same way. You shoot a bullet, and that bullet usually does constant damage, unless you get some power-ups. This is a pea shooter, a gun you can find in the game. From this point forward, I will show guns by their damage distance graph, that being distance the bullet travel on the x-axis, and the damage per hit on the y-axis. This gun does 4 damage per hit, with no damage drop-off. This is how it would look like on a graph. The equation for getting damage on this gun is y equals 4, where y is the damage per hit. It doesn't matter the distance the bullet travelled, all damage is the same. This is a bit boring. Let's step it up. Most of the popular shooters implement damage drop-off. Damage drop-off is a mechanic in video games. It allows developers to fine-tune the weapon without changing it too much. When a shot is hit, the game calculates the distance the bullet travelled and does damage accordingly. Usually, your weapon does the max damage up close and the further away you go from the enemy, the lower the damage will be until a damage cap is reached. This is Valorant. A gun you can buy in the game is the Phantom. This is the damage distance graph for it. We will only look at body shots, since that's the only place I hit. We can work out the damage this gun does by working out the equation of the lines that make up this graph and bound it. First we define our inputs and outputs, this will be X and Y. The equation for this gun will look something like this. Between 0 and 20 meters it does 39 damage. Between 20 and 50 meters it does 35 damage. Nothing too complex, let's step it up. This is Rainbow Six Siege, a popular FPS. They said it could not be done. This is Jaeger, a guy you can use in the game. He uses the gun, the 416C carbine. I did some testing and got some stats for shooting enemies in the body. Let's put it on a graph. Between 0 and 25 meters, he does 38 damage, and above 35 meters, he does 22 damage. The issue isn't these values, it's the ones in between. Usually in games, this is connected by a line. How would we calculate damage, given any distance? There are a few ways to do this, I will show you two. The first method is that we first find the equation of each line in the graph and bound it, like what we did before. Between 25 and 35 is a bit harder. All lines have the equation y equals mx plus c. Since we know two points the line goes through, we can find the equation of this line by using a few formulas. We can find m by using this formula, and we can find c by plugging in these values. And now, we have an equation to work out the damage between 25 and 35 meters. When a bullet is fired from 15 meters, it does 38 damage. From 100 meters, it does 22 damage. From 27 meters, it does 34.8 damage. This method is relatively simple compared to the next method.
What we did was we basically found the equations of the lines that make up this graph and bound it. The issue is, if you want to adjust the gun a bit, like make it do less damage from a certain range, you have to recalculate this line again, which can be a pain. There is a much better way to do this. That way is normalizing and linear interpolation. These methods may sound scary, but like before, I'll explain it. In this method, instead of us calculating the line, we can let math do it for us. First, we've got normalize. Normalizing values mean you have to scale the values between the range 0 and 1. And the normalized values will be in between these values. We want to normalize values we want to interpolate between. In the context of Jaeger's gun, this means between 25 and 35. Normalizing values can be a bit confusing. So the way I like to think about it is a number line. For example, if you have a number line between 10 and 50, 30 would be the halfway point. 30 would be represented by the value 0.5, since it's halfway up the number line. The number 20 would be a quarter of the way up the number line, so it will have a value of 0.25. 40 would be three quarters along this number line, so it would have a value of 0.75. Hopefully it's clear what's happening. The number 10 would be represented by a 0, and the number 50 would be represented by a 1. This is basically what normalizing any values mean. This equation may seem difficult, but the bottom part is the total distance you want to interpolate between. In this context, the parts of the equation where you want to connect by a line. The top part gives you a proportion of that distance. Let's go back to Jaeger. We want to normalize the values between 25 and 35, since those are the values you want to connect with the line. After we get our normalized value, let's call this n, n will always be between 0 and 1. If the equation generates a value below 0, we'll just set the value to 0, and if the equation generates a value above 1, we'll just set the value to 1. We can now use the equation on screen to get the damage from this normalized value. We put the min damage here and the max damage there, and just like magic, you can interpolate between any distance and get the according damage. If the distance is 25, n would be 0, and so the max damage would be done. If the distance was 100, n would be above 1, which just means we set it back to 1, and now the min damage will be done. If the distance was 32, n would be 0.7. We would then do the max and min damage proportionally based on this number. That's what this formula does. The damage y would be 26.8. Now, this method is much better than the previous one. If we want to adjust the values a bit, we can without the other lines getting messed up. We can now change the maximum and minimum distance damage fall off happens by changing these two values in the first equation. And now we can change the minimum and maximum damage by changing these two values in the second equation. Now we can make a completely new gun. Just copy and paste these equations and change some values. And bang, a new gun just like that. But we can take this further. Let's step it up. This is most definitely overkill. But what if damage drop-off wasn't linear? What if connected with an S-shaped curve? This is where the fun begins. I can't find any game that does this. So I believe I'll be the first one to explain how this theoretically will work. Having a line connect the max and min damage can be quite limiting. This means you can't fine-tune this line. By using the S-shaped curve proposed, we can make a variety of lines and adjust as needed. This can give the devs way more flexibility when working on their game. We can make the line as straight, as curvy, or as steep as you'd like it. Let's see how we can make this. I'll be using this S-shaped curve equation from now on. When plotted on a graph, it looks like this. 
the graph goes from 0 to 1 in a positive correlation. And when the value of B changes, the steepness of this curve will change. When B is between minus 1 and 1, the curve goes all weird, so we will just ignore these values for now. But how would we implement this in a game? Let's go back to Jaeger's gun. From our previous efforts, we have the equations for the max and min damage, and their bounding lengths respectively. How would we bound this S-curve to it? I'm now going to go through this next section extremely quickly, and this may seem a bit confusing, but I'll explain a better method after this explanation. We want the S-curve to have a negative correlation. An easy way to do this is to change the value of B to a negative value. This helps, but not a whole lot. We still need to shift the graph upward. An easy way to do this is to add a plus C on the end. This plus C would be the minimum damage. But now we need to stretch the graph upwards. We can do this by changing this A value to the difference in the damage. But we still need to stretch the X value. Just change this D to the total length where the damage changes. A better way to put it may be the interpolation distance. And finally, we shift the graph to the right by changing the H, the value in which you want to start interpolating. And there we go. Now you have a graph which you can change the curvature by changing the value of B. This is a bit too complicated. I would not recommend anyone use this. If only there was a better way. As you guessed, there is. And it's much simpler to use. This can get a bit tricky to understand. Before we were manipulating this equation to fit on the graph, if you don't know what each letter does, you're a bit screwed. Now we're going to adjust the normalized value. This is the equation to get the normalized value. You should be familiar with this by now. The issue is, this equation only gets the value in a linear way. The second equation then converts those values into damage. We have to somehow convert this linear expression for getting normalized values into this non-linear expression. Let's look at this S-shape equation again, but this time with only B. Let's say B is 3. Do you notice something? The line goes between 0 and 1, just like how our normalized value does. Look at the red line for now. Before what we were doing was this. If we get a normalized value as the input, we would then use that as the output for our damage equation. If we get a value of 0 0.5, we use 0 0.5. If we get a value of 0 0.9, we use 0 0.9. 0 0.1 would be 0 0.1. This is straightforward. Now what we were going to do, is after we get the normalized value, we convert it to a new normalized value. This equation here does it perfectly. A value of 0 0.5 would still be 0 0.5, because the feature of this graph is its symmetry. A value of 0 0.9 however, will be very close to 1. 0 0.1 would be close to 0. How would this look overall? The first equation for getting a normalized value won't change. We'll just rename the output to n1 for normalized value 1. We then put n1 into our S-shaped curve to get n2. Now we just use n2 to work out the damage. If you want to change the curvature, just change this b value. I'd recommend keeping b between 1 and 5 where 1 is a straight line, and 5 is a very steep line. The beauty of this graph is that we can change the line to make it look like a linear graph, like the carbine, or a very steep graph, like the phantom. You can make the damage curve do anything you want if you change this equation a bit. I'll give you a few other examples below. Just note, that the equation in question should preferably go through the point 0, 0 and 1, 1. As long as these requirements are met, you can kind of make any damage curve you want. 
non-linear interpolation is everywhere. It allows game cameras to be smoother and for games to not look like it was made in the 80s. And even outside of games. It allows this animation to be smooth. Most of these animations in this video use keyframes to make things move. And that is a combination between linear and non-linear interpolation. I think that's pretty cool.